meetings and I had to cancel them because um, because you hadn't, hadn't finished this movie or one thing or another. So eventually when we finally did hook up with Russ, I, I, I don't think you really believed it, that uh, I knew him. Is that right? Well, I think that the first time Charlie phoned back, I met him at this party in Chelsea and I gave him my business card at the time and I've seen Charlie subsequently tear people's business cards up absentmindedly in front of me. So it was, it was literally a couple of uh, months later that you phoned me up and said, I'm going with this guy called Ewan McGregor, we're going to be at your house next Wednesday. And they just didn't show up. So I thought, okay, you know. So the next, he said, well, we're going to come next week. So uh, I briefed everyone in the office, and uh, and they did turn up. And I, you know, when I walked up to the office, there was a couple of bikes there, and they just said, "Look, we're going to stay 20 minutes, have a quick chat with you and a couple of other production companies." And we just sat down and had some tea and toast and talked through the idea, and that was it, really. Um, but it wasn't as easy as it sort of sounds. You know, we had to, you know, if you sort of say to TV companies that we're going to just ride around the world, they all want to know what's going to happen and Charlie and Ewan were adamant that they just wanted to film what happened instead of setting loads of stuff up. So it's quite a long time before we actually managed to get all the whole package together and then set off. I remember, I remember, um, you know, getting the book deal was actually quite easy and because the book people sort of could think, okay, we're two guys going off on an adventure, we don't know what's going to happen, you know, fantastic um, book and but whereas on on TV, it's a little bit of a harder sell to sort of say, they say, you know, we're going to do this, and, and that's, they say, so what's going to happen? Well, we don't know. And they go, well, that's a shit TV show, isn't it? <laughs> and I remember, we, I remember we came over here to America to try and look for some other, for some, for a TV deal, and we were talking to one of these, one of these American stations, and, and, um, and I remember we, we, we explained the, um, we explained the idea, and, 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 and this guy says, well, yeah, you know, um, I get the idea, but, uh, but who gets voted off? <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking, well, it's not going to be Ewan, is it? <laughs> so I, was, I was going, I don't particularly like those guys, do you, Ewan? And Ewan was going, well, actually, I think they're quite nice, actually. So, so it, it, was, it was a lot harder to get the TV deal, but we did eventually get it. Um, and, then, and then it's one of those kind of things when, when, you, when you, it's like anything, if you're pitching for anything, from, for business, or you're going to the bank to get money, or you're going somewhere to do whatever it is, you're pitching an idea, and you tell, say any old bullshit to, to get the money, and then eventually they say, oh, okay, well, you can have the money, and then, then you have to actually go and do it. And that's the, that was the big thing, wasn't it? We all sat there sort of shaking each other's hands, thinking, well, we got the TV deal, and oh, now we've got to do it. And that was, um, that was one of the, I think that was one of the hard things. I think the hardest thing was trying to find sort of a cameraman who could, who could ride a motorbike and um, could film at the same time and, and, and that we didn't have to take too many people because you and I, we really didn't want lots of people around us. We had Russ and Dave in the support vehicles, but they were often sort of half a day or a day behind sometimes, weren't you? And, and, um, and so the three of us were, were able to be able to sort of get into people's houses and do all sorts of different things um, uh, because there was only three of us. So our, our kind of journey was trying to find someone to do that, and we came across a guy called Claudio. Do, do, do you guys remember Claudio von? You know, you know his name is Count Claudio von Planta, and he's a real count. We used to call him something else quite a lot, but um, uh, but but he came along and, and, and actually sort of got on the bike and, and started filming with us. And, but he was a big crasher. He used to crash a lot as well. I remember one time we were we were. We were in the middle of Russia somewhere, I can't remember. We had these walkie-talkies to talk to each other. And Ewan was ahead of me, and I, I was second, Claudio was behind, and, and he came up on the walkie-talkie going, um, it's Claudio. And I'm going, yes, we know it's you, Claudio, after a month. He goes, yes, um, I, I think I've fallen off. <laughs> so I remember saying, well, you, you have or you haven't fallen off. And there was a long pause, and he went, yes, definitely fallen off. <laughs> I remember riding back, and there, there was this bike splattered all over the floor. So, but he did do an amazing job, and, and we used a huge amount of his footage, and, and you know, and, and he helped us create that kind of flavour that we wanted for the TV show. Yeah, I mean, I think we also had another guy called Jimmy Simak, and I think that at the beginning of the whole process, for some reason, we just started filming everybody preparing. And no one had really ever done that before in a, in a sort of documentary, just sort of filming 
you know, the fitness, repairing the bikes and working on the bikes. And, um, I don't know about fitness, but <laughs> we try. <laughs> yeah. But I think, so in the first version, I mean, it, it was never really about making a TV show in a conventional sense. It was actually just trying to put this expedition together and then film it. So it was really just trying to keep it as natural as possible. So this other guy, Jimmy Simak, just was almost doing a fly on the wall as we tried to put this thing together, all the arguments and the discussions, etc., etc. So that I think that preparation showed to everyone that we didn't really know what we were doing half the time, and we were just trying to solve the problems as you would if you were going off on a trip. But it seemed to capture people's imagination, and then because you could see that. You know, after we did the medical training, you could sort of see that it was going to be difficult for us to save each other's lives, and that's why we decided to take a doctor. You know what I mean? Um, and subsequently, I think that proved to be accurate. You know, when I crashed that car in Mongolia, for instance, with the doctor in the car with me, that wasn't probably quite so wise. But <laughs> yeah, at least you can see why we, we sort of made the decisions. Nothing was made up, and we just filmed what happened. And uh, I think that Charlie had sort of picked that road in Far Eastern Russia called the Road of Bogus and that sort of set the route because we had to get there to then jump over into Alaska and therefore you sort of had to go through uh, Kazakhstan and Mongolia and cut up you know so it just sort of naturally unfolded but um, but I don't know I don't know if people wanted to ask questions as well I don't know if anybody's got any questions as we're chatting if you did have any questions just put your hands up you want to take one of the mics yeah Hold on. Hey Charlie and Russ, how are you? Um, are you a long way up? Is it in the cards? A long way up. Yeah, I mean, we've always um, sort of thought about doing doing a third one now. Sort of when we're going to do it, we, you and I sort of it's always said question. maybe we kind of like the idea when we're a little older to, to do it so that we could be two grumpy old men going up and saying, oh, the bloody world's changed. And, you know, back in my day, it was much better and, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, we would love to. I mean, I mean, in, in between, Russ and I have done other TV shows as well. We did the Dakar Rally, where I, um, I, uh, I managed to, I managed to do five days of sixteen days. Um, I remember, I remember when I went, uh, when I fell off. I, I, because I don't know how many of you know about the Dakar Rally. It's a bit, it's a little bit like the Baja Thousand here, and and uh, just just sixteen days, and and. Um, and there's, you know, there's huge amounts of, of this 250 bikes, 100 cars, 100 trucks race, 500 support vehicles. They have 500 journalists. They feed two and a half thousand people every night. And the whole tent of bivouac moves 500 kilometers every day. And, um, and there are 56 doctors and nurses and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, I remember falling off that and breaking my hand. And I remember trying to pick the bike up and I could feel all this crunching going on in my hand. And it was like a crisp packet, you know, when you crunch a crisp packet, I was thinking, oh, that's, that's not good. And, um, and I eventually got back on the bike and I was riding along and I looked down at my other hand and my thumb was pointing in the wrong direction. And I remember thinking, oh shit, that's really bad. And, um, and I remember you, Russ was, had said at one point, he said, because I started panicking about that I'd messed up the TV show, it was only five days in. <laughs> And then we'd spent all the money, and and um, and we didn't know. <laughs> we did. I was thinking, shit, we're not going to be able to get them back. And eventually, in the back of my mind, I heard Russ saying to me, Charlie, if we make it to the end of day five, we don't have to give the money back. <laughs> so I remember thinking, right, we're going to get on the bike. And I remember sort of banging my thumb back in place, and rode to the end of this day. I did another four hundred and something kilometres, and I remember. I don't know why I thought of this story, but I remember sitting at the doctor's and, the, and I, he took my gloves off because I didn't take them off during the day because I was worried I wouldn't get them back on. And, uh, and he looked at me and he says, Oh, Shani, he says, uh, not only could you not ride a motorbike, he said, I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to wipe your own ass. <laughs> so, he was wrong. I could get a baby wipe on this finger and I could just reach around. That showed him. But, uh, but anyway, I don't know why I popped to that popped into my head. <laughs> Uh, if you're doing it again, what would you do different? And you regret not taking the KTMs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the KTMs, well, you know, we all know what happened with the KTMs. But we did write them an email at the end. And, and then we said, um, when we got to Magadan, we said, um, uh, arrive two days early, bikes doing well, love you and Charlie. And uh, sent it off to KTM. We didn't get a response, <laughs> quite obviously. But, but, uh, but anyway, but there you go. But, 
Well, I think, you know, KTM had offered six bikes. We've got it in writing from the blah, blah, blah. And then I think that this guy, I don't know if you saw on the show, that big guy came over and just was questioning everything we were doing. And he said, what would I tell you if, you if you got to this point, you couldn't get any further? And it's a bit like, well, if you said that to everybody that was ever going to set, set off on a bike trip, no one would ever go anywhere. And, um, and I think he reported back that he didn't think that, you know, the guys would make it. And I, and I think that was a mistake. Because I think in the end, BMW sold ten tons of GSs as a result. I, I don't know, but I think it sort of tra changed the. Certainly back in England, everyone used to be around on sports bikes, and now everyone's running around on GSs. I th I don't, would we do anything different? I don't know. I mean, there's other bikes now. You know, I think the Triumph range is is pretty hardcore now. At that time, it wasn't, but now I think they're making a good old bike. Um, you know, the route would certainly be up through South America. Um, and, and it's probably not as tough to go up through South America as it is, say, Africa or Kazakhstan yeah. and stuff like that. So, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen anyway. But, I mean, you know, Charlie and I have been doing these things now for the last 10 years. And, I mean, last year we did Extreme Frontiers USA. That's actually not come out in the States yet. But we spent about three months just riding around America. And, you know, that was good fun. I suppose I suppose you and um, would probably not want to have fallen off so much. <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. So um, anyway, has anyone got another question? This guy, I mean, uh, I'll get the close one. Oh, yeah. Ladies first. I was wondering what kind of experience you had, Russ, when they came to you. That made you think, oh, okay. Well, I, I, well, well, from a biking point of view, I've been riding bikes since I was 14. So the, the, the reason that Charlie and I connected, I just managed to have a, uh, a I, I came up with an idea of a documentary wanting to film every motorcycle manufacturer in the world. And I'd managed to persuade a TV company to, to let me fly off. And I'd literally just come back from Japan from filming Honda and Yamaha and Suzuki. They let me into the design rooms and the, and the production facilities. So it's like incredible. And I got back about six o'clock that morning, so I was really jet lagged, a bit like we are now. And that party was happening, and had I not gone, I would never have met Charlie. But from a TV point of view, I did. I had a sort of particular model at that time where I'd sort of get TV commissioned, and we organised books and DVDs and sponsorship, particularly. So that was sort of fairly unique. So I sort of, I sort of knew what I was doing, but I hadn't really taken on something quite as big as that. But I knew that we could get sponsorship and we could do a TV deal and, 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 and a website. Do you know what I mean? So I had all the ingredients plugged in and plus I love biking. So it was sort of a meeting of minds, really. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, sometimes in life something comes together at the right moment. It, it was still hard work, but it all came together like that. It was a bit odd. But, you know, and it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun sorting the problems out. I think we all knew somehow we'd sort it out. You know, somehow we, we, we set that date, I don't know what it was, it was like April the 14th, uh, April the 4th or something. You know, we said we're going on that date and we never changed it. Did you, did you want a question? Um, what, what was your favorite place uh, where you've gone? Favorite place? Um, well, it's, 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 it's a good question because and, and it's a really difficult question to answer because I suppose there are there are there are moments in, in, in all of us when we travel or, or whatever I mean, and 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 when things go wrong at the time it's a real pain in the ass but 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 it's often the bits that you always remember and and you know I think for us one of the one of the most amazing bits was the road of bones in Russia where it was which where all the old gulag camps were were based there and they and these all these prisoners had to build this road to a gold mine and the reason it's called the Road of Bones is because for every kilometer there are three people buried in the road. And, um, uh, and that was really difficult. The road itself was actually in quite good, good condition, but all the river crossings, all the bridges had gone. So it became this, this, this incredibly difficult piece of road to actually, to actually get across. So those bits are the ones you remember fondly. I, mean, I, rem I remember bits of, of, of road, I can vaguely remember bits of road in Russia because the roads were quite good in Russia, so there were moments there, but, but um, and like when we did uh, Long Way, One Long Way Down, you know, um, Ethiopia was one of the most incredible places I remember because the roads were so, so cool, 
to ride. So yeah, so there's always lots of bits and pieces that you remember, but uh, but never one place. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but Charlie and I did a thing called the Biny Means for the BBC. I don't know if you've seen that, but that we we sort of ended up riding Royal Enfield bullets across India. And 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 I love India. I've just come back from India actually last week. It's just sort of colourful and it's vibrant, and there's people doing stuff all the time. We've got those what. And um, we rode these bikes, you know, the, 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 the Royal Infants are made in India. And uh, you know, you're riding along this sort of dual carriageway and there's cows in the road and there's people, and then there's <coughs> trucks coming towards you in your lane, you know, and then you come to a level crossing, I don't know what you call it in America, where the trains come across the road. And normally in England, we all like form up on the left-hand side in an ordered manner. But in India, they just form up on both sides, facing each other, like there's going to be a big <coughs> face-off. And then the, the things come up like this, is like, I don't know how they're going to, I mean, I just weave through, but it's just bonkers. So, I mean, I particularly like India, because it's just fun and crazy. Yeah. You guys, with all the hours and hours of filming, did you have a chance to really enjoy it? Or were you always trying to find that next big shot? Did you go back and do a few scenes? Or did you, all, you know, all the hours of the time So, did you get to enjoy it? Yeah, no, of course you, you enjoyed the journey because, you, you know, there was much more riding than there was filming and, and, and stuff. And, you know, in some days, you know, you might have one or two days in a row where not much actually happened. And, and then and then another, you know, say you go in, <clears throat> one week come into a town, there's suddenly a little story will, will, will come along. It's a bit like when we, um, we were in Ukraine and, and uh, we got stopped for speeding by these two policemen and, and, and we, we were, they said we were doing 120 kilometers an hour or something like that. And we were sort of arguing. I, I realised that that his his radar gun was uh, was was fake, and it looked a bit like a hairdryer. And they said that doesn't work, does it? And he goes, yes, it does. And they go, it does it doesn't. He goes, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, so we met him. We started chatting to him. We said that we were going to stay in this town. He goes, oh, no, no, don't stay in that hotel in that town. Come and stay with us. And he said, come back when I finish my shift. So so we came back, and, and this is exactly what what we wanted to do. You know, Claudio, you and I going off to meet this guy. So, so we followed this, this policeman to, uh, to his house, but instead of taking us to his house, he took us to this guy called Igor. Do you remember Igor? And, and, and he, we, so we turned up in this very poor um, town, but went into this incredibly rich house with these big steel gates that opened up and they were building a swimming pool on the right hand side. And you just thought, fuck you know. And, um, and he sat down, I remember we had this, he cooked us lunch and he was a merchant sailor and he told us his whole life story all afternoon and stuff and then eventually his friend turned up and Ewan's back was to the door of the kitchen and then his friend came turned up with this sort of broken nose and these gnarled fingers and he took his jacket off and he just took his big gun out and just placed it on the table and I said fucking hell Ewan he's got a gun and Ewan's eyes popped out and um, and I remember, it, and there's more and more people turned up. They were all turning up in in um, in pinstripe suits and, and stuff. And, and they'd all seen The Godfather too many times, you know. And they'd walk past, and they'd open their jacket, show you a gun. They go, "Do you like my gun? It's a good gun." And I'm going, "Yeah, it's great." <laughs> but that just that that evening just went on and on and on. It was an extraordinary place. But but you know, without that, so in certain times you get that, and then other times, and then you film that because that was just hilarious. And the idea of having Claudia there and not you and I filming it, it just meant that we could be more relaxed about it. And the, and the longer you spend together, the less you realize that the people are there. So, so, so it becomes just part of the whole thing. And, 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 and sometimes it was a pain, a pain, you know, Claudia would say, look, we've got to stop here and do a passing shot. And, you'd have to go back up the road and come back down again and all you wanted to do was ride and stuff. So, but you know, it was a balance and, 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 and it's wonderful to, for, to have that, um, that record. I mean, I've not really watched the show as much, but, 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 but um, occasionally I go somewhere and someone's playing it and I'll see a bit of it. And occasionally I've sat there, looked at the TV and I can see myself talking to someone and I have absolutely, absolutely no recollection of who that person was. I, I don't remember meeting him, don't remember having a chat with him. It's kind of bizarre kind of thing. So I'm very grateful for, for, for having that record. And I think anybody who does one of these trips, or any trips, you really always need to you know, document it really well, take photos, 
maybe write it in a journal or something, but it is so easy to forget, you know, what you did on day three when you were down doing day 10 of your journey. You've already forgotten about what, what's passed. And some of the guys here I've been on trips with, and there's one guy here who came to Africa with us, um, and, and, uh, and I'm sure you know, it's difficult to remember all of what, what's happened, isn't it? So it's, uh, anyway, but there you go. That's, what, that's my thoughts. Let me sneak back here. All right, we got one more question, guys, and then we want to let these guys get some rest. It's pushing up on 3 o'clock in the morning, and they just got Hi. Uh, quick question. I know on long way around, your family and friends obviously reacted as one would expect when you say you're going to take your buddy and take two motorcycles around the world. But on long way down, Ewan's wife, Eve, was actually inspired to join you guys for a couple of weeks on the journey. And I was curious, after doing long way around and long way down, not counting necessarily Dakar, but was anyone else inspired uh, to sort of take up riding or react differently to the fact that you guys were riders after seeing what you guys experienced on your adventures? Well, I, I, I don't know if any, I mean, you mean anybody else that we knew or anybody in general? Uh, well, I think, you know, I think that, you know, obviously, um, Abe saying that she wanted to come down was a bit of a surprise. And, uh, you know, you could sort of, you know, I think we looked at it in two ways. One, which is like, it's a bit of a boy's trip. And, you know, um, I think it's fair to say, <coughs> you wouldn't hold it against me to say that Abe, before that, hadn't liked motorbikes. So I once it was positive that she suddenly thought, well, well, hang on, there's something here I'd like to try. And I think, therefore, we were... It was a positive thing, you know. She learned how to ride a bird bike, and she joined us in Malawi, and um, you know she did really, really well. But I think the trips actually inspired a lot of people to go off and do their own trips. I mean, we know that they used to come to our place and start at our place. I remember one bunch of people. There were six riders. I don't know if you have pizza delivery mopeds in in America, but in England, you have the pizza box on the back of the bike. And these guys decided to do the same trip as we did. And we think, really? What, are these little Honda C90s? So they all started at our place. And when people used to start at our place, they would keep in touch with us, you know? And, let us, and these six, six guys just disappeared off into the ether. We never heard of them again. I don't know where they started or finished. So I think it inspired a lot of people to go. And I think it showed people that, that it's possible that, you know, everything is difficult in life, isn't it, to do something different, but sometimes you have to just step up and have that adventure, and you never regret it. I've never met anybody that set off on an adventure and actually said, I wish I'd never done it. They come back with stupid anecdotes about how they got stuck in the mud and got stuck at borders and stayed in flea-ridden places and God knows what, but that puts a smile on your face. So I think it's when you stay stuck doing what you're doing and wish I'd, you know, you, well, you, you never want to get to the point where you say, if only I'd done that. You know, it's much better to say, at least I had a go. Maybe I didn't get to where I wanted to go, but you end up then doing something just as crazy at the same time anyway. I mean, that's what we're over here for. We're setting off on Monday on this trip. I mean, we know where we're going to go, but you know something stupid's going to happen on the way down. And it always does with him anyway. <laughs> you know, and to answer your question, filming is fun. I, it's, it's, I love riding bikes, always have done. But to capture stuff on film was equally fun and put together something after so you can look back on it you know I think everybody would want to do that so it does hold stuff up but we never really went back to make anything up the only stuff you go back for really is is that passing shot the bike going past the camera because you need those you know but apart from that we never stop to make stuff up um, anyway yeah I, I remember I actually Russ was saying that I remember talking about three people um, uh, hotels and stuff like that. People always know, you know, Charlie, you guys um, camped a lot, but you guys stayed in some hotels as well. <laughs> they said, yeah, but you don't get scratch and sniff in, in, on TV. And some of those fucking hotels are just like, you know, I remember one hotel we went into, and, and eventually I, I just stuck my tent up on the bed and slept in the tent because it was so disgusting that I just thought, I just can't, I can't do that. But those are all the kind of, as I said, of the fun things. And, um, but it is lovely, and we are here with Eagle Rider to, to do um, a motorcycle tour. And it's going to be a first for me to, to go to Mexico. I've never been to Mexico before. And it's going to be a first for me to be on a, on a I think I'm on an, on an Indian. Um, 
uh, on this episode, and that's the first time I've never really done any long journey on on a on a Harley or or an Indian before. So it's a, it's a it's going to be a fun experience, um, and and I can't wait to. I've been promised tequila and lobster on the beach. I've been promised. And if I don't get that, I'm gonna I'm gonna spit the dummy. <laughs> But um, anyway, but there you go. I think we're going we're gonna to hang around a little bit if anybody wants to have a, um, an autograph or a photo. Yeah, we've got some. Uh, happy. Yeah, we've got some, uh, some autographs, some photos over here that guys can bring over, guys. And, and again, I know you guys would love to sit and I'm sure talk for hours and we'd love to listen. But again, push it up on three in the morning. So we appreciate you guys coming straight from a flight oh, from okay. London. No worries. Thank you, you guys very much. The, you heard Charlie. Uh,